The other parameter of circuits, which we'll come across all the time, is their input and output resistances, or impedances if there are significant reactive components present. This is simply, like all impedance or resistance, the ratio of the voltage to current at the input and at the output. These parameters have a significant effect on what happens when we connect circuits together. For example, supposing we have a microphone which has an output resistance of 100 ohms connected to an amplifier which has an input resistance of 500 ohms. And the microphone generates 100 millivolts. Then we have a situation shown in the diagram. So how much of the 100 millivolts generated by the microphone actually gets into the amplifier to get amplified and used? Well, we can redraw the circuit shown in the diagram, and if we do this, we'll find that it's just a potential divider, as shown in the next diagram. Here, the input voltage to the amplifier is equal to the output voltage from the microphone times 500 over 100 plus 500. This is equal to 98 millivolts. So, although we were expecting 100 millivolts at the input of our amplifier, only 98 millivolts actually arrived. This is because we're losing the extra 2 millivolts across the internal resistance of a microphone. It's not actually getting out of the microphone and into the amplifier. Suppose now that our amplifier has a gain of 10 and an output resistance of 100 ohms, but it is feeding into a second circuit which has an input impedance or resistance of 1000 ohms. Well, the amplifier will produce 98 millivolts times 10, or 980 millivolts, which is 0 0.98 volts. But how much of this amplified voltage gets into the next circuit? Again, the output of the amplifier and the input of the next circuit form a voltage divider, and we can redraw the circuit in the diagram. This time, the voltage getting into the next circuit is equal to 0.98 volts times 1000 over 100 plus 1000, which is equal to 0 0.909 volts, or 909 millivolts. So, we fed 100 millivolts into a times 10 amplifier, and just by common sense, we would have expected 1 volt to come out. But in actual fact, only 910 millivolts approximately does come out all because some of the voltage is lost across the input and output impedances of the circuits when they're connected together. The moral of this story is that we must be very cautious about input and output resistances of circuits and how we connect different blocks together. In general, the following rules apply. The most common case is that we are trying to transfer voltage from one circuit to the next in line as we were trying to do in the example above. In this case, we want the input resistance of the receiving circuit, which was the amplifier in the previous case, to be as large as possible, or, to be more precise, to be much larger than the output resistance of the preceding circuit. And so we can generalize this by a rule. For good voltage transfer, we want R in, the input resistance, to be as large as possible. Another reason for aiming for this is that in most cases, if Rn is low, current will flow into the circuit from the previous one, and this may generate heat, but also many such circuits are simply not capable of generating very much current, and so we run into problems. It's often said in this case that the circuit which is being fed into is loading the preceding circuit. A second case, which we come across quite often, is if we want to transfer power from one circuit to another. This situation is not as common as transferring voltage, but does occur, for example, in audio amplifiers, which are trying to drive loudspeakers. Speakers require power because they have to physically move the air, which requires energy, and also in radio transmitters driving antennas or aerials. In this case, 
the input resistance of a circuit should be equal to the output resistance of the previous circuit which is driving it. So we can say for good power transfer we want R in to equal R out. Finally, it's less common to need current transfer, but this is just the opposite of a voltage case. For good current transfer, R in should be small, or to put it more precisely, R in should be much smaller than R out.